Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. This is going to be the tutorial for a new release called The Daff, um, which I've uh, started to call Faffadils, um, because I have been faffing with these for quite some time now. They've been launched on pre-order and this will be the accompanying tutorial. As always, there are various purchase options. You can purchase the template set on its own, you can purchase the materials kit on its own, or you can purchase a combo deal. If you've bought the kit, then this is what you're going to find inside. You have a choice of two colours, um, a classic yellow and a bright yellow. This is the bright uh, I don't have the classic to hand, but I will put pictures um, up so you can see the difference. The green that is included in the kit is our New Zealand carded bat leaf green, which is a really gorgeous kind of spring colour. You'll have some 22 gauge wires and we've gone for just 22 gauge wires throughout the whole project just to make life a bit easier. Inside you'll also find some floristry tape this is if you if you decide you want to wrap the wires at the end we are going to be going through the wool and wax method at the end which i personally like but if you want to do the wool and wax method you will need some felters wax that isn't included in the kit you'll also get some white floristry tape so i'll show you what we do with that a little bit later if you purchase the template set this is what you're going to get and this is the biggest template set that I currently do this um, leaf template is uh, 19 centimeters long so it's quite sizable and then you've got your trumpet and your petals what you're going to need in terms of tools and equipment this is really going to depend on what your end result is going to be. If you're just going to have single flowers with a single leaf, um, you may want to put them in a display. You may just want to use the heads as a brooch. So it really will be slightly varying on what we do here. But obviously, you know what you want to do at the end of the day. You will not obviously need your felting surface. You will need your felting needle and I do recommend something like a 40 spiral um, for use with this wall. It's not too aggressive. It gives you a, a nice amount of working time. You're going to need some pliers. You're probably going to need some wire cutters. I always like to have some super glue gel on hand and we're going to use that for wiring um, the leaf a little bit later on. That's all the tools and equipment covered, I think. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, you're going to need a little something. This is the uh, one of the jigs from the armature assistant, and this is the uh, 20 by 50 um, jig, but you're going to need something about 20 mil wide um, if you don't have the armature jig. Just any anything which is firm and sturdy because you're going to use that to create the uh, stamen for your daffodil. I think that is it covered, so we'll get on with our project. The first bit I like to make is the trumpet and um, it's always a, a fun bit to make. So you're going to need your main colour. There's enough, if you've bought the kit, there is enough um, in there to make three daffodils and three leaves. And you're going to need, all of the weights and measures that I'm about to give are based on the New Zealand carded bat that, that we stock. Um, for those of you who are interested, and some of you may have seen this little guy pop up on a few of my tutorials now, um, this is a, a very small incremental scales or pocket scales, and you can weigh out very, very small amounts. That's um, almost a gram it's just under a gram but this little guy will do very that's 0.27 of a gram so it's nearly 0.3 of a gram it's very useful when doing things like petals and the like uh, and you can pick them up on ebay but we're going to use about a gram uh, for this trumpet now the way that i start with this particular um, template is 
I start by filling the, the frilly edge. So we're just going to tuck some wool starting at the corner and you don't want to overfill it. My template is 10 mil high, yours will be 10 mil high. And we're just going to go in and just knock some fibre into these uh, little frilly bits at the end. Just bring some fibres in. They are getting attached to the surface very, very lightly. I actually find that with this, that's a little bit of a help because the template might move ever so slightly, but you're, you can just slot them back into your fibres. Doing this, it helps just to have them in place. So just going to knock in very, very light with the stabbing. We're not driving. As soon as I feel my needle just touch the surface of the foam, you can feel the resi resistance of that density and I'm stopping. A little bit more. And you want to, when placing another bit in, overlap what you've done previously. You want to join those fibres together. And then go into the next frill. And just work your way all the way down that frilly edge. Almost there. When doing this, um, I'm working sort of away from myself, but you may find it easier turn the turn your surface rather than trying to turn your project at this point because with it stuck to the surface, you just want it to hold there just for a little bit while you get this basic shape in. So I'm just going to very lightly go over that, and as you can see, we've got this frilly edge already starting. And don't be alarmed if you, you know, your template goes a wandering. Just slot it back on. A little bit more of our wool. Overlap what was there previously with a very thin amount. You don't want to bulk up. And then we're going to work it down the sides, along the back. And again, some very light adhesion to the felting surface. A little bit more. It's always easier to add more fibre than it is to try and take it away. And don't felt too solidly at the moment. The fuzz is your friend because if you do have a thin spot, adding more wool to thicken it up will be much easier if it's not too solid. So there you go, that's a bit of a base layer all the way down. I've still got this little bit left over here. So now what I'm going to do is just carefully take it up from the surface. You might be able to see I've got a thin spot here, a little bit of a thin spot there. You know, hold it hold it up to the light. Um, you'll find that you know, you'll be able to see through it. Uh, the other thing to note is when you take it out of the template, if you turn it over, turn the template, because this isn't symmetrical in any way. Going to put that back in there. Just start going over it now. We've raised it from the surface. Just get those little bits back in the frilly 
slots a little bit all over there so there's my thin spot there I'm going to pull off a bit of this and lay that down and this feathered edge just you know feathers out into the rest of the the project so it blends beautifully lift the whole thing again check your project I've got a little bit of a thin spot there back in sort out the frilly bit first a little bit more over there so this is what You'll do, you'll spend more time on this than I currently will. Um, I try to do this as quickly as I dare for tutorial purposes. And you'll find the more you lift and replace, lift and replace, the less it will stick to your surface. So I'm going to turn the whole thing over now and just go in from the other side. This down here, this section, is not as crucial as this frilly bit. So this frilly bit is what we really want to be spending the time on. And I'm using the first barb of my needle. You can see there's the, the frilly bit. And the more you work this, the easier it will um, it will come in and out of this template. The more it firms up, it will really start taking the shape of the template. So. Get it back in there. really sort of work it up into those indents This is just a case of going over this as much as really firming it up. You know, pick it up, have a look at it. check for any thin spots and then you are just going to keep going over this once you've really got that that edge in there what we want to do now is refine all of this both sides but you want to leave this bit here. You want to leave that a little bit fluffier because this is what we're going to use to attach. I'm going to come in with my multi-tool. And this multi-tool only has two needles in it um, instead of the, the customary three because I like the fact you can go in a straight line so I can work out into little recesses like this. Um, if you have the third needle which is offset 
you can uh, hit things quite easily so the needles I've got in here are 40 regulars I believe they're 40 regulars or 40 triangles so and again just going through until I feel the resistance of that if you if you're using foam and I generally work on foam uh, for the templates because it's a very nice flat surface But we're stopping as soon as I hear or I feel that resistance to that mat. I'm not driving in. Turn it over. Work both sides. And at this point, you know, you're really getting your surface nice and smooth. It's so important not to be too heavy handed with your needle. A, it, it puts a, a lot of strain on you. You know, if you're like this, that's an awful lot of work. But also, if you are driving through your project, you're just going to fluff out that side. And then you turn it over and you drive the other way. You'll fluff out the other side. So it's a, a never ending cycle of fluffiness. get it back in the template and so you really want to spend the time now just f really firming this up getting those nice crisp indents I've gone for a 10 mil template for you and me um, ones that I have produced previously, some of them have been 15 mil. Um, I have found that particularly where you've got small detail, the 15 mil, the depth, um, actually becomes a bit more of a hindrance um, than a help. Because as you are felting and then felting, the wool or the fibres are moving up and down in the template, so they've got this sort of greater depth to travel and it can start pulling fibres and distorting. So... Right, that's as much as I'm going to do. You will firm up a bit more than I probably have. Once you're happy with it, take it out the template and then just go in these little indentations and around the frills, just tidying them up. I probably come in with an even lighter needle this is a 42 spiral and then just start polishing all over the surfaces really taming and do bear in mind if you're using um, a thicker needle and you're doing this the wool will go the way that you're pointing your needle and if you're driving it in that way you will start to get some distortion so you really do want to be using a very fine needle for minimum distortion a good slopey angle about 45 degrees across the surface of your project um, and that kind of, sort of brings the fibers in nicely helps with a nice smooth surface that's as far as I'm going to go with it. It's it's a lot fluffier than I would like, but for the purposes of the tutorial, um, we can we can carry on from here. Um, the next thing that we're going to do, I'm going to leave it alone, is we're going to roll this now, so we actually start forming the trumpet. Now, for those of you who do like to recycle, reuse, and generally like to find a use for everything. You're going to love this bit. 
because if you've ever been inundated with these packing peanuts, um, we now have a use for them. We're going to use this peanut as a mould for uh, forming the trumpet by doing this. Now, as you can see, this one's far too big, but they squish really nicely. So what we're going to do is you're going to bring, you're going to bring this round and overlap it ever so slightly. We don't want much of an overlap at all. It's a little fiddly. And then just a few tacking stabs, hold it a bit further up, and a few tacking stabs, hold it at the bottom. And then just work all the way up and down that seam a little bit. And again, don't drive very lightly, just a few, and then pull the peanut out and then put it back in. And then use that to go all the way round and again we've got that seam so just tease some fibers tease them overlap them and then blend them together That's, don't forget to pull your peanut out and put it back in. Like the surface, it will, you'll end up with the peanut stuck in there. And then you're just going to work all over your surface. Smooth it out. Go around. Your edge at the top and this just holds it very nicely in place I will try to include um, a couple of these peanuts in the kits until I run out of them but I think actually I might not have put the peanuts in the overview at the start so but there we go and now as you can see we're getting this kind of fluted trumpet shape and again you you will undoubtedly go around this um, a lot more than I have. Um, I have done this frill very quick and crude. So, but there's the trumpet in true Blue Peter style. There's one I made earlier, <clears throat> which moving forward I'll use this one because it's a bit nicer. <laughs> To get this uh, open, just put it down on your surface. I should get the other one back in. And just pull it out. And then where you get the, the bend, just go round ever so lightly. But we're telling the wall, no, we, we want you to go this way. So there you can see that that one has frilled out quite nicely. And I've done that with this one. So you just go round, go round and work it. Pop your finger, rub, you know, get some compression on it. 
it all helps to you know really get a nice good finish on that to finish off the trumpet at this stage all I do I'll get the one this is the one that I was just making as you can see this is all open up here and this one is uh, a bit more closed so to do that uh, let's see if I only can explain this you just grab the fibers and just poke them just bring them you're actually poking air but it does as you can see round starts rounding off not very much because you don't want to lose the length of your trumpet but you do want this kind of back bit to be about the same kind of level so we're just going to poke into air it doesn't matter if there's a bit of a hole at the back because that's all going to be um, attached to the petals so all we're trying to achieve is just kind of this nice sort of rounded bottom to it like that yeah you can go in work the inside a little bit this is the bit that you're really going to see so you know you just might want to spend a little bit of extra time just smoothing that out playing with your frills I'm not going to play with my frills I'm going to stop there so that's the trumpet part complete the next thing we're going to make are the petals for the back and I don't know if anybody else has seen it but wouldn't that make a, a great little hat for a flower fairy or a <laughs> I don't know some little creature and uh, with a, a flower hat see now now my brain is going um, 10 to a dozen so I'm going to grab the petal template and we're going to make the petals for the back of the daffodil to make the petals for the daffodil you're going to need this template and as you can see there were three petals in the template and six on um, the actual daffodil so what we're going to do is fill the template to create the first three petals and then make three individual petals using this um, you don't do too much um, build up in the center so uh, otherwise you can end up with it being a bit chunky so that's why we do one whole template and then we use the three sections and then it gives you a little bit of diversity as well you can place the petals as opposed to them being uh, in a sort of a fixed point the to do the set of three uh, it takes about a gram of wool so what I would do is I would get in my little trusty set of scales and just for ease just pull out 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.3 and then we'll have this little bit extra the way that I do a multi-petal template is rather than trying to fill the whole thing at one go I'm just going to lay down the fibres in this first section and just rough out the shape so go all the way around and then take the petal out and put it to one side pop 
the next petal in and again just rough out that shape third working right up to the edge get that nice corner in and then lift it off once you've got it roughed out, I, I tend to find that it's easier to manipulate three pieces that are roughly the right shape than it is to try and form three pieces at the same time. So pop that one in, turn it, pop the next one in and just firm that down little bit more. And this fluffy bit in the centre we're going to tease some of these fibres across into the other petal and we get the third one, stuff that in and work that. And again, just these centre fibres, just fluff them out in the three directions. And work them over the petal and that will give you a really nice solid base in the middle. There we are, we're all in now. So take the whole thing up. back in and now we are just going to keep going over it. Do pay uh, good attention to your edges and corners. Get that really nice kind of pointy end. Kind of classic daffodil petal shape. Some of you may have seen version one of this um, that I posted uh, around on um, Facebook and I was creating draft one I suppose and it was all looking very very good and I was quite happy with it and then I got handed a bunch of daffodils and I put my flower up against it and just went oh <laughs> back to the drawing board so this is this is version two and has been modelled off of actual daffodils that I've physically had in my hand rather than internet pictures but there we go just working that in and out the template to and fro I'm going to come in with the multi-tool really firm this down Turn over, rinse and repeat. Yeah, and don't be afraid to take it out the template and work on it. Um, if you've got one of those um, heavy punch tools that has lots of needles in it then 
you know you can you can use one of those I, I don't recommend you use one of those inside the template um, that would be a horror story waiting to happen but you know take take this out the multi punch tools um, don't work on foam really well in fact I don't think they work at all because um, the impact uh, you just end up breaking a lot of needles So if you're going to um, use one of those, uh, my advice is to put it on um, like a rice bag or a, a brush type surface. So work on it, put it back in the template. You've always got your template to go back to if you feel that you might be going a bit off course, but you're not confined to the template. You can always take it out and work on it outside once you've got that basic shape this is very very quick on my part but there's the basic shapes for the first sort of round of petals what you're going to do now is make three single petals and these are all going to be 0.3 of a gram each. I'm just going to show you one, but obviously you would do this three times. So 0.3 of a gram of the wool into the template. And again, for this, we just go start to finish. We don't rough it out. You're going to leave this little bit of fluff in the middle. So that gives us something to adhere the individual petals to the, the main flower. multi-tool all of your petals um, and, and bits will have a side that looks nicer than the other side so when we come to do the assembly we will always put the, the sort of the nicer side forward There we go. And do keep in mind that I am doing this at a rate of knots just to speed up the tutorial. I'm sure you all don't want to sit there whilst I'm uh, refining things down for tens of minutes. So. The other thing I like to do with the petals, if they feel like they're just a little bit chunky, just get some compression. It does flatten them out a little bit, but pop it back in the template. Reshape. These templates do... Um, help to create such wonderfully consistent parts. So there's one petal. So you will have made one centre cluster of three and you're going to make three single petals. I'm going to go do that and then we're going to come back and start the assembly of the main part of the flower. Okay, so I've made three petals very quickly and we've got our main cluster of three. Putting them together is very, very simple. Just eyeball it and you just want to hold the petal, see where you like it. I like it just there. 
and just a few tacking stabs at the back. Now tacking stab is when we're just sort of tacking it one to another so we're not really firmly felting so we've got some options to change our minds. I like that one there. Bring in the next one. See where you like it. Lightly tack it in place. And then for the third. So just going to go over with that lightly in place. And then come back and, and have a look at it. Bring in your trumpet. Have a look. See if you're liking where that's going. Yep, I like that. So now we're going to commit. And we're really going to felt this centre together. And this is the complete opposite of everything um, that I say to do. We are driving through. We're not going up the petals. We're just containing it to this sort of centre part. About the same kind of width as the trumpet and just go round and round and you are driving through one and through the other um, obviously do keep picking it up from your surface because you are going to get these fluffy bits and um, this particular location it's not going to matter because it's all going to be enclosed and you won't see turn it over You could even bring in a slightly heavy duty needle, um, you know, go up to a next size up, but I'm happy with this one. So the 40 spiral is pretty much my go-to for everything. There we go. That's quite firm now in the middle and that's what we want. We want something that is really quite firm. I'm just going to go round and just refine this part of my petals and again very very shallow angle coming in at the sides not driving just using that first barb just to tame those little frizzy bits There we go. Nice, good solid center. We're going to get the trumpet. We're going to have a look, see where we want we want that trumpet to be. And this is where you also decide, do you want it that way round with um, sort of the back petals behind? Do you want it this way round where the petals are in front? You know, you just look at it from all angles. I quite like that. Oh, there goes the trumpet. So, pop it on. Another quick check to make sure. And then just go straight down through the middle, just with the, a few tacking stabs, just to really lightly hold it in place. Look at it. That's okay. So, we're going to go round in the middle, and let's see if I can... So I'm going to go round in the middle of the trumpet. The needle is slightly angled, it's not going to be a straight up and down. We want to do a bit of straight up and down around just for those tacking stabs, but we want a slight 
angle because we just want to catch this bell part on the inside. Turn it round. And then you can even come to the outside and we're just going to catch that edge where it start, just starts to curl under. Work that all the way round. And go back in the middle. And this is, you know, we are driving. You see all the fluff at the back. That's not going to matter. Just remember to do a bit of driving and lift. Drive and lift. And if you can see, I don't know if you can, sort of right down in there, it's really firm. And that's that's what we want. We want a good, firm, solid kind of centre. So we're going to be poking wire holes and things. So there we go. Now, the next thing that we will do for this is to put the main stem wire in. Just going to give it a little bit more. So we've got a nice, nice solid centre. You can use. Um, an awl for this I would recommend using an awl for this um, you could snip your wire off at a very sharp angle and do it but an awl will give you a nice crisp uh, kind of hole for wiring um, it's worth pu putting um, a point on your wire and to do that take your wire and snip an angle like that it will just it will aid what we're going to do is poke two holes that are quite close together so you have to make I do it from the inside of the trumpet but it's going to be sort of one there and one there they're going to be really quite close together so Twiddle, twiddle. And you can see you've got a good crisp hole. If that middle section was um, fluffy and um, not very firmly felted, you wouldn't get such a good crisp hole there. So, see how easy that went on. The trick is getting the second hole in without closing the first one. So we'll see. Nice and close. Twiddle, twiddle. And then just go back through. And there I've got two good holes. So two wire. Let me just pop my cork back on there. So to why you come from the back through the first hole, then scoot the flower down towards the end and then turn back, I don't know what, turn back about, four, well that's 45 mil, so that's about where I'm going to bend back. Do a U-turn and aim 
for the other hole. It comes through very nicely. Let's move that out of the way. Then you want to get a nice tight um, sort of twist in the back. So cross the wires over and really pull them across. Then grab your foot. I hope that came out on camera. And then just twist your wire. Down your stem. Like so. So we've got a nice strong wire. These 22 gauge wires are um, are really nice and they will hold they will hold your own but they give you that um, that realistic bounce that the movement that flowers can have you don't want something that's necessarily so rigid that there's no movement in it so that's the flower wired up that's all we're going to do to that part at this stage the next thing um, that I'm going to do is make the stamens and that's a very interesting technique I'm very excited to share this with you because I feel that there's going to be a lot that you can take away from that and use on other projects so um, I'm going to grab the wires and everything and we will start on the stamens The stamens are a very interesting um, thing to make and I think it's got lots of project potential for you to diversify and use this technique to um, you know, make other things. You're going to take one of the 22 gauge wires in your kit and one stamen will use one whole wire. And what you're going to do is you're just going to fold it in half. Now at, uh, at the beginning, I said you're going to need something that's around uh, 20 mil in width. This is the armature assistant, uh, or one of the pieces of the armature assistant, which is a little thing that I devised for helping make consistent armature sizes. And anything will do that is solid and about 20 mil. Bend the, bend the wire in half and then, I realise this is a green wire on a green background. Um, we'll see how this works out. Bend it in half and get it nice and sort of flat. Then separate the wires, or rather open them and just, my wire the other way, and just twist, give them a couple of twists, just to anchor that as a section. So what you're going to end up with is something that looks like that. From And this is going to be the centre stamen. So this one's going to be slightly longer than all the others, but and this is how we achieve that. So with the, with the stamen, centre stamen pointed towards you, this is so philly. <laughs> Doesn't want to stay still. So with that pointed towards you, wrap over, to so come over and then go round underneath the middle, back up and back down, like that. So 
we've gone our wire was pointing this way so we've gone up at the back of this template I've held the template on top so the wire is poking out this way we've brought it back over back over this side wrapped it around gone back up that side back over and back down that made sense I think that made sense we're going to do it again but so here just give that just this spare bit just tuck it off to one side pull this off and you've now got these sort of two bits here and what I would now do is twist these in place if you find that the 20 gauge is too um, sort of too strong then um, by all means go to a 24 a 24 gauge will be uh, more than adequate for a stamen So keep the, leave the middle one as is, the taller one, the first one that we did, and just wind together from the centre to the end. You don't want them too tight. The more you twist, the shorter this will become. So just keep them as even as you can. So that's what we've got. So again, what we did was we bent it in half, formed that middle one, a couple of twists. We have a wire going off this way, a wire going off that way. Lay the template on top, come up and over down one side, around the centre, up, back down and poke the end off that way because we'll need that in a minute. Then what you're going to do is turn the whole thing 180 and do exactly the same thing again with the other half of the wire. So, wire up. Here's our centre bit. So we're going to bring the wire down that side. Squish it take it around that middle part back up the other side and back down and there's this end as well so what I'm now going to do is just from the center wrap these two ends together Take your little jig out, and then twist twist these together. Go to the other one. You don't want a balloon at the end, just this doesn't want to play. Just squish it down. So what you've got is a wonderful hot mess of wires that look nothing like a stamen whatsoever. Just manipulate them so that the centre one is pointing towards you. That's the centre one. I'm going to show you the visual very quickly and then open it back out so that you can you can see but now what you want to do is just squash your middle one together and just loosely twist it you don't want to twist it quite as tight as the others because you want this one to be a bit longer okay so that's the the first one that we did which was from the middle and then we made these two, end went that way, then we turned it around, we made these two, and then we twisted our two ends together. So we've got one centre and five around, which 
which I think is what a daffodil has. So from the centre, if you bend these up, so I've just realised that I've got, there we go, that's a bit better. end wasn't playing so let's try that again there's our center and then we bend these up sort of to meet it like this And what we end up with is this kind of cluster. So you've got the middle and then these around. Before you do all of that, though, what we're going to do is cover this in the white florist tape. So I'm just going to grab the florist tape and then so you will do your stamen to this point and then we're going to cover it all with florist tape and then we're going to bend it all up into the middle but I wanted to give you that visual to show you that's the shape that we're going to be aiming for right let's grab the florist tape you only need uh, I cover this in bits rather than trying to cover the the whole thing if you're not familiar with florist tape, um, this is not sticky, but it sticks to itself. So the way to activate it is you hold one end and you stretch and you can hear it. It kind of gets a little tacky to itself. This is a bit fiddly and you can, of course, um, absolutely buy pre-made stamens but I like a challenge. So all we're going to do is, I start with the centre one, wrap this all the way up, and you want to go past the end of the wire, and then just wrap it back down and squish and roll and all that kind of stuff. And then you end up with this sort of covered wire. We're going to do that on all of these. So hold it in the middle, anchor it over itself, wrap it up the wire, go past the end, wrap it back down, just kind of squish and roll. And this stuff breaks off very easily, so if you've got too much, then just, just pull it off um, when you get back down to the middle. You don't have to worry about wrapping right in the very, very centre. Um, it's really kind of these sort of end po points that we want to make sure we get. So wrap it round up to the end. And, you know, they don't have to be lovely and symmetrical and you know they need to look a little a little gnarly I mean, I'm only using bits that are, what, five centimetres long. Just for covering these, I think that's seems to be a good amount of tape. There. 
last one. Oops, that's a bit big. And using this kind of technique, you can make all kinds of different stamens and, um, you know, bits for flowers. Um, you know, it's it's it looks really good. One of the um, things that I discussed with a friend um, the other day was uh, me being me. I was like, I wonder how I could get it. So it looks like there's pollen there and um, apparently there is this stuff for nails called flocking powder, flocking powder. Um, and just wanted to make sure I said that very clearly. Um, and it's this fluffy stuff that you stick to your nails. So I reckon a, you know, a, a dot of glue or maybe some felters wax on the end and you could dip it in some of this powdery stuff and it would make it look like um it had pollen on it who knows something to play with maybe i've got one of these uh coloring pens um from spectrum noir the, i think they're an alcohol based pen um but you could use any any kind of pen um with color i like this one it's quite subtle and it's got um, a thinny end and it's got a thicky end. Um, I'm going to use the thinny end. And it's this kind of nice um, yellowy sort of colour. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to colour over this tape. You can, it, It's worth mentioning you can get yellow florist tape. But... It's all one consistent colour. I found colouring this sort of stamen, um, you don't, it doesn't colour it all. You get, you missed spots. So you still see the, you know, bits of, of white tape and it just doesn't look quite as uniformed. Um, But there. So it's just going over and taking that white tape and giving it some some kind of variation. This is amazing. Usually I end up colouring my fingers. There we go. So let me pop the end back on but if you can see it now it looks more variegated and you don't see a lot of this because it's inside the flower but you'll know it's there as well so now we bend these up into place cluster it all around that sort of center long one longer one and there you've got this perhaps should have let the coloring pencil dry <laughs> it's all come off my fingers uh, so if you can see now this goes in there and how amazing does that look it's just that little finishing touch that little attention to detail. Uh, you can, like I said, you can buy pre-made stamens. Um, you could, you could put beads in there. You could, there's all sorts of things. You could put a bee in there. That would look cute. Um, I'm going to show you how to attach this to this. Um, we're going to do that next. So, a little bit more of your yellow wool, and we will attach our stamen to our flower. Grab your, your stamen and just open them out ever so slightly. Hang on. It does help if I do this close to the camera. Open them out ever so slightly. And what you're going to do is get some of your yellow wool and just push the stamen through it. 
like that and then just pull off excess and take that back up and push the stamen through it again and pull off excess and I need a little bit more on this side so I'm just going to put this down through those two so what we've done is effectively just made a little fluffy anchor for that Let's get rid of that. So get your felting needle, pop your stamen down in there, and this is where we're going to we're just going to go very slowly and very carefully. Um, so let's bring those back into the centre a little bit more. Should have done that before I stuffed it in there, but just find a place down where your needle goes and then just go up back and forth in that place find the next place go back and forth don't stab around because you do have a, a large cluster and a knot of wires at the bottom so all we're going to do is just take that fiber down and you know we're driving again we're coming out the back work it nice and gently if your needle won't go don't force it and there it doesn't take much and that's now really quite secure in there there we have it some stamens you can make them um, you can make them shorter than what I've made them um, I think on daffodils they are um, a lot more sunk into the trumpet but I think visually um, for this it, it looks really nice to just see that sort of hint of a stamen in the middle so there we go that's that bit we're going to make uh, or I'm going to make the leaf next um, and then I'm going to come back and, and do the back of the flower. Um, it really depends where you're going to go with it. If you're going to have a vase of them, you might want the daffodils and the leaves separately. If you're going to do a single daffodil with a leaf, um, then you may want to join the two together. So, you know, obviously you've got in your mind what you want at the end of it. Um so we will make the leaf next then we'll come back we'll do um i think it's called a calyx on all flowers um but don't quote me on that we'll come back and do the calyx and the stem and all the sort of finishing off bits so right on with the leaf to make the leaf you want to grab um to do the whole thing it's going to take uh, about a gram of the wool which you are going to split in half um, to two 0.5 grams the first 0.5 gram we're going to lay down and the way that I do this is I just pull it all out even ish to about the length of the template and this is a huge template um, this is 19 centimeters from end to end you will notice that it does have this hole at the end which is a wiring hole we're going to put the first um, five gra uh, 0 0.5 grams I should say in there start it the end that doesn't have the wiring hole and just feed in because you want to make sure that you do get a nice crisp kind of point on the end see how we've got that 
get it right up in that end and all we are then going to do is work down the whole length of this template I get this fiber in just sort of tacked all the way down it's such a long template it's very difficult to film the whole thing uh, without going off camera somewhere but I'll do my best just get it lightly very light adhesion to the surface just get it up the sides it out put it back in just just roughing out that shape like like we did with the petals you don't want a real crisp defined shape at the moment I'm going to turn it round to do this part it'll probably be easier for filming so there you go just right down into the bottom work up the sides And just rough out that shape. Gather it up in the template. Let's see if I can get a slightly better angle. I've adjusted the cameras ever so slightly to see if we can uh, get a better view of what's going on. So we're getting it in, we're just compacting it down. I'm going to come in with my multi-tool. This particular template was one of the reasons why I didn't end up um, creating this set in 15mm high templates uh, because you, you wouldn't be able to get a multi-tool in there and you would be constantly peering over the top um, into quite a deep sort of template to do this so I'm just going to work over we're firming it up but not solid this is half of the leaf we're going to be putting a wire in and then we're going to be putting in the other 0.5 grams on top so we want it compacted down, but we don't want a solid shape that we can't felt into. Work it up, up and down. Take it out of the, you can take it out of the template. Have a look, see if you've got any particular thin spots I think we're good um, to get this back into the template um, because these pointy bits are so pointy put it in slightly further down and then slide it up I generally find that that works uh, a lot better pick the whole thing up and again just put it in and slide it down. And this 0 0.5 grams is probably going to fill about half of this template. The one gram um, does almost fill the whole the whole thing, but it works out. It a good size um, and density of leaf. I also think that the 10 mil will help visually um, to keep things uh, a bit thinner than a 15 mil template set would. Okay, so this is 
this is in there so the next thing we're going to do is wire this up you may not want to wire um, and if you don't what you will do is continue just filling the template until you're happy with the thickness and consistency of the leaf shape I'm going to wire this so give it nice and flat like so down in the bottom of the template my wiring hole is this end you're going to grab one of your 22 gauge wires and this wiring hole really does make it so simple you just slide your wire in and then slide it whoops poke your project out no slide it up on top and then you want to go up not right to the very very end but almost Then you're going to grab your glue. Um, I personally would say you want super glue over tacky glue. Um, the reason for that is that uh, tacky glue does take a long time to set. So the liquid super glue um, is very grabby, very quick. This super glue gel does give you a little bit of extra working time. So I'm just going to grab, let's put these needles in my little holder. Little piece of greaseproof paper. Save my surface. So what I'm going to do is hold um, my wire in my template and I'm just going to run a little bit of glue just there and I'm going to hold it and a little bit of glue just there and I'm going to hold it. I'm going to keep my finger there and let it set for a few minutes so um, this is a good time to have on um, some music in the background as you play hold the wire in place while the glue dries but I will fast forward this bit on the tutorial so we're not sat here together watching glue dry it's still a little bit tacky <laughs> but I'm so impatient <laughs> Once this is, I'm going to do this off camera, but once this is dry, so you'll go off, make a cup of tea, let this dry. You can see it's already starting to grab the fibres. Um, as you've got a couple of dots there, so I would probably put another dot down here and another dot up here. Um, just for um, extra security, I guess. But you need, this needs to dry because if you stuff your finger in there to hold it down, you're going to end up stuck to your project, which I do very often. Um, so I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to put in a couple of extra dots of glue here and here um, just for extra security. And then we're going to come back and carry on filling the template. So my glue, I think, has actually dried. Nope. <laughs> maybe I think it's still a, lit, a tiny little bit tacky but we, we can work with that I usually don't leave it this long um, but let's get on with filling this leaf so here's the other sort of 0 0.5 grams and we're pretty much going to do exactly the same thing I always feel 
from right to left so I like that to be the bottom let's pull this out just nice and evenly and it doesn't matter if you've got left over the, the weights and measures aren't an exact science but I find that they do help so I'm just going to pull that bit off and then from the top of the template I'm just going to make sure that I haven't no, we're okay. I haven't stuck it to the template. That's usually a favourite trick of mine. So we're going to go right to the top. And start filling. So I'm going to just spend a moment or two on this top tip. And just make sure we get that nice and compact. And then work down. Now I'm not driving through. As soon as I fill, I'm sort of penetrating that first layer. I'm just going to go over. And do bear in mind that you've got a wire in there now, so nice and gently. I wouldn't use a multi tool at this part. And then just take your time. I find that a, a very slight angle, I know I talk a lot about having a very vertical needle um, when felting in, in the templates, but particularly when going down either side of a wire, a very, very shallow angle. And you'll find that if you, if you do hit that wire, you, you'll tend to scoot off. But we've got a nice loose grip on the, on the needle, no gripping it hard. We don't want that kind of tension in your arm or your neck. So nice and light and just work your way down. And this will be um, quite full now, this template. As you can see we're almost up to the top. around I'm just going to move it up so it stays on camera this has been one of the most uh, interesting things to film this long leaf it is a um, a much larger version of the snowdrop leaf so they're both very similar in the shape, but the length of this is, as I said before, it's about the template's about 19 centimeters. So just working it all over, all the way down to the end. When you're doing the intricate parts, just you know, slow down. I'm gonna pull that bit off. And work it right into the very, very end. You know, and if you're if you're struggling with these little you know, tippy bits, don't worry. Just bring the whole thing. You know, you can finish off. This is the bottom of the leaf, so you know you can bring it out the template to finish it off. 
this template's only a you know a guide there we go Now what I'm going to be doing um, is a single leaf and a single flower. Um, in the kit you'll find some... Um, the word escapes me. What's it? Raffita? Raffia? Um, and I've included um, some of that in the kit as well. Uh, because if you're doing these... Um, they look really nice, um, just wrapped up. That's a nice sort of finishing touch to it. But more on that nearer the end. So that leaf is pretty much filled. We've got a good, good kind of solid leaf there. So now I'm just going to turn it over and go up up and down the one side then the other and what I'm going to do now is take the whole thing out that nice a little bit chunky but that's okay because what we're going to do now <laughs> is just squash it and having that chunkiness really does the leaf squashes out so well There we go. Back to the back to the surface. The rest of this now I will do out of the template probably. Um, refining, coming in with a. 42 spiral on that 45 degree angle and just you know kissing the surface with that first barb or two yeah really sort of tame that fluff and obviously polishing is a personal preference you polish and flatten and tame and defrizz as much as you like, as much as you're happy with. Um, I would, uh, I don't know if you can see the difference, see how it's all fluffy here and this bit that I've been working on is a lot smoother. Yeah, just keep going over it and going over it. And then going over it on the other side but it does yield some very you can get a very very smooth um, finish with this wool it's really nice wool it's one of my favorites so you'll work the leaf and refine it as much as you like I'm leaving the wire in currently but obviously with the wire, particularly if you're doing an arrangement or something like that, having this wire means that you can do some very, very interesting things um, with, I mean, this is not at all what a daffodil leaf would do, but 
just being able to wire something like this you know add a little bit of a shape on it curl it spiral it um, you know you can do so much when you've got a wire in there and having that wiring hole um, just makes life so much easier obviously don't be too heavy handed with it you know the glue that you've put in there is only dotted so you know if you if you give it a good hold and a tug it may come out but so finish refining your leaf and next we're going to go back to the flower and we're going to work on the stem and the calyx at the back we're going to start by working on the um, calyx and the stem of the row uh, of the rose of the daffodil I have roses on the brain at the moment it occurred to me that the daffodil has uh, quite a thick um, stem so what I'm going to do is I'm going to include some pipe cleaners in the kit as well to bulk to help you bulk out the stem there are a few options for your stem one is to wrap a pipe cleaner and then cover it in green florist tape and I've I've included the light green florist tape in this um, kit most of the other ones come with dark green but it's a very sort of spring flower so I wanted to use the light one um, I'm going to use wool and wax uh, which is a, a favourite of mine. It's a slightly more uh, faffy route to take, um, but as I referred to these as faffodils at the start of the uh, video, um, why not? I'm going to wrap this pipe cleaner, um, maybe even just take it back up at the end. They do tend to get a little bit fatter at the bottom but obviously if you're just using the daffodil head for a brooch or an accent piece or something like that you won't necessarily have done the wiring I don't know how much wool this is going to take so I'm going to start with one gram um, and then I will weight and measures it as I go and we'll see what we end up using Get off, I mean this is probably about, actually, I'll tell you, it's probably about half a gram. It's not even that, it's, it's had a bit more. It's almost half a gram. And we're going to get it into a long piece about the width of my palm. So apply it to the back of the daffodil. Let's move this in close. Everything that we're going to do is going to stay around this kind of diameter of the centre. So I'm just going to put the wall and using my needle I'm just going to attach um, a few of the outside fibres just on the outermost part that I want the calyx to be. I'm just going to attach and turn. And what this is going to do is help hold this in place. I'm just going to go round. In fact, I'll just pull a bit of this off. And just go back round until you meet up with your first, the first bit you tacked down. And this is going to help all of this to stay in place as we kind of twist and turn it all. So I'm going to bring back in the bit I just discarded over there. But and then wrap 
wrap it around just loosely but you don't want this to exceed where you've kind of drawn that that line so we just wrapped it around nice and loosely and we're just going to start stabbing the back of the daffodil just from that outer edge to where our wire is in the middle and obviously you've got the wire here you've got your um, cluster of wires there's the stamen on the other side so nice and carefully I'm just using the first barb on my needle let's turn it round I'm just creating that start of a calyx bringing it all back towards the centre wire okay. so this is quite well attached up here now so I can go back in and see see where I'm at there Still a little bit fluffy here, so there. And then this starts coming down the stem, and don't twist it too hard, but just start. Start twisting it, see where it's at, see if you know you like the size of the stem. I'll just hold it in place, a few tacking stabs, just to stop it from unwinding. Just down either side of the wire. Because I'm waxing, or I'm going to be waxing this, I'm not going to need to do this quite as neatly. what you could do if you're going the route of um, the floristry tape is just sort of have this bit built up here and then kind of taper it off so it goes very thin and then start wrapping your um, floristry tape from there but I'm going to work down work this around Just hold it in place this doesn't because I'm waxing it doesn't need to be neat for me because the wax is going to seal all of this in I do think the waxing technique does make quite a realistic looking stem as well mm -hmm. I'm going to just take that, roll it, roll it right up near the head as well, squeeze it between my fingers, really get some compression going on there. Comes out a lot neater. My needle is um, old. <laughs> I'm not an avid believer of new project, new needle, but um, that one's not felting quite as, as quickly, quite as well, so that tells me it's time for the sharps box. There we go. All I'm going to do now is work all the way down this stem so this is probably going to use more than a gram um, this is the other 0.5 so what I'm going to do is wrap it over on itself so that it anchors you want a consistently thick 
piece you don't want sort of a clump here just make sure it's nice and even for wrapping this is fairly thick because um, the stem is not going to be too too thin I think for what I want to do this might be long enough I don't don't know about wrapping all the way to the end what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a daffodil and a leaf um, and then wrapped with some decorative raffia so I'm going to grab the leaf here's my leaf if you're doing um, a cluster of them or you're going to put them on a display or something like that generally the daffodils sit a lot higher than the leaf um, but this one's probably going to be for my mum. So I'm just going to give her, um, you know, a, a daffodil and a leaf like that. So I want them both ending at about the same point. And I think visually that looks, that looks quite nice with the daffodil just slightly higher than the leaf. So there. found a few little wispy bits of stray fibres so I'm just going to knit those together and when using short fibres, um, long fibres are better for wrapping um, generally I find than short fibres but you can just lay your fibres out and just stab up and down them, we're not felting we're just attaching them at a few key points And you can generally make a longer piece. So I'm just going to wrap that around this bottom part. Let's have another quick measure up. Yeah, I think about there. So I'm going to come in with my pliers, sorry, my wire cutters. I'm going to wrap off the end and just stab that just off the end and then come back up move that out of the way get a compression roll There we go. Like I said, it's not neat, but I don't need this. I don't need this to be neat. Um, that's a little bit thin, right there. So again, just fill, wrap, um, and if you're doing this, and you do have a thin spot, as you can see, I've got one there. When you're laying down extra wool don't be tempted to fold it um, because if you fold it you will get uh, a very distinctive line you want these feathered edges so there's my thin spot I'm going to lay this down with the bulk of the wool over the spot but then these feathered edges wrap it round and then those feathered edges will mean that it will blend out and you won't have a very distinctive um, sort of ridge where you've added more wool. There we go. So get that in for a compression roll. And there you go, it's like it was there all the time. So, that's the daffodil. Oh, got a white bit. That's the daffodil done, mostly. Um, let me just grab another little bit. It's good to be able to show you 
um, these little things of how I fix and just add little pieces in again that feathered edge just go over it you could spend um, if you wanted to leave this as a wool um, stem you can leave it as is and just spend an extra amount of time um, just f going over and over and over this with a felting needle but I'm going to break out my trusty felters wax I said the felters wax doesn't come in the kit um, because not everybody's going to want to to do this but I'm going to show you all the variations that you've got and then obviously you can decide which uh, suits your your end vision so if you're going to felt over this just do it on an angle remember the wool will go the way that your needle points and just roll it back and forth And you can achieve a very nice finished stem just in the wool. So I'm going to break out the wax melter and grab myself some natural coloured felters wax and we're going to wax the stem. We're on the home stretch now um, for finishing the project. Uh, I'm, go I'm just going to wax the stem. And to do that, I've melted the felter's wax, which is the natural colour. And we're going to put some of that onto here, and it's going to seal everything in. I'm not going to wax all the way up um, into this what I tend to do is leave the first bit um, of wool and then start waxing from about here down and then I find it kind of blends out one into another grab a little this is a artist's palette paint mixer thing I think and what you want is something to get the wax from there onto your project I'm going to start at the top and work my way down if I was doing a very thin stem um, this would be a lot easier but the daffodil is quite a thick stem so we're going to need to apply wax so I'm just taking a bit I'm just going around that first sort of bit we can always work up that way a little bit more but if I start too far up it risks going on the petals so just take not saturating it just a little bit and go in with the fingers very lightly to start with and just start rubbing the wax into the wool if you've wrapped this then you want to make sure that you're waxing the same way that you have wrapped um, if you've wrapped the wool this way and you're trying to wax that way um, that's going to make a mess because you're going to be unraveling your wool as you go don't worry too much at the moment about any um, sort of white lumps of wax that would all work out 
now you can see it's it seals all the fibers in it creates a in my opinion a very realistic looking uh, stem and do have a look on my YouTube channel um, there are all kinds of videos um, on there of, of using the wax to make feet beaks claws bird feet ears noses um, so you know have a have a look this wax is very versatile and now good for making stems there we go just gently rubbing it in and working down and scooping a little more do obviously do this over something like a sheet of greaseproof paper um, not over your best table <laughs> Obviously it is melted wax, so it will be hot. So when you apply it, just give it a few seconds before you go in with your hands. You can see that's really starting to come together it's possibly worth mentioning that to the natural um, coloured wax you can add um, your own colours uh, beeswax dyes is what we recommend the wax does come in black pink and natural but obviously the natural you can you know you could tint There we go, almost there. Just work it all the way to the bottom. Just a little bit more on the bottom there. Just work it in. You could squeeze really tightly um, and it would you know, squash the air out and you could make a much thinner stem. But I don't want anything too thin. There we go. That's done. If you've got any lumps of um, of wax. Um, Actually, I need to touch up a little bit if you I've missed a spot and just a little bit of wax over the area, spread it out. The wax really does kind of seal in the fibers. Obviously, the main component is beeswax here, so with things like waxed stems and feet and all that kind of stuff, don't put them um, on a hot surface and obviously not recommended to be left for any long duration in direct sunlight I have left this in direct sunlight and it, it held up okay but it's not recommended you can see I've got some wax build up here now if you get a wax build up like that you can sort of just scrape it off very lightly so there's a minuscule amount and then just roll it in your hands and the heat and warmth from your hands and the wax 
will just take that right out. Let's just roll. And that really, it's not a, it's not a real hard compression roll. It's just using the warmth of your hands to distribute the wax and I'm just going to use my finger up here around where it blends from one to the other. And then as you can see it, it fades a lot better. There. Wax stem done. It's looking good. So I'm going to clear this up and we're going to do our finishing touches. Finishing touches. Obviously this is going to depend um, on what you're going to do with your project. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to have this leaf with this daffodil just as a singular item. So I don't need anything um, like this wire stuck out the bottom. So as I didn't um, glue right down at the bottom, what I'm going to do is just scooch that up about three mil, chop that off and then just let the wire disappear into the leaf like that. This is still very fluffy for me. Um, obviously you will have refined and done what you wanted, taking it to how you want it to be, but that's what I'm aiming for. In your kit, I'm gonna include uh, some of this stuff, which is amazing. Um, and just, I think it's it's straw-like. Um, it's either called raffita or raffia, and I, I always get it wrong, but um, it's amazing stuff. It's, it's really rustic looking, and I think it just sets off a daffodil beautifully. So you're gonna find some of this in your kit as well. And all I'm going to do is take a length of it and kind of you know, fold it in half, it does have a mind of its own, this stuff. It's great fun. So I'm going to fold it in half and fold it in half again. I'm going to take my daffodil and my leaf and kind of arrange them. And then trying to hold all of these. I guess if I was sensible, I might kind of put some little sort of tie around this first but I didn't think of that so I'm just gonna tie that off there like that make my adjustments and then maybe tie it again very much winging this at the moment so you would have more time to sort of play with your ideas, but like so, and that's maybe a little big. So let's grab a pair of scissors and then what I'm going to do, let's just cut this down a little bit. So it's a bit much. You'll find a good amount of this stuff in your um, in your kit. So let's chop that down a little bit. And maybe just do a bit of a wrap around to start with and 
There we go, that's a, a little better. Obviously you finish it off however you like, but... So I'm going to cut those bits off there, and those bits off there. Sort of fan them out a little bit, and just make the whole thing a little rustic. Arrange my leaf. And there we go, one finished daffodil, or faffodil, you may feel the same way after all of this. There we go. I hope um, you all enjoy this project um, as much as I have uh, making it. It's been great fun. I love the daff. Um, it's just been such um, a, a beautiful flower. It's spring at the moment as well. So well, we're heading that way. So, you know, things are really kind of starting to, to sort of colour up. I said this is the bright yellow, uh, which is available in the kit. There is also a classic, uh, which will be a paler yellow. So do have a have a look in the Etsy shop or on the website. That's www.mumsmakery.co.uk. There's also a blog there um, if you fancy a, a sit down with a cup of tea and a read. I would absolutely love to see your daft creations, so do feel free to hit me up on Facebook or any of the social media. I look forward to seeing what you make. That's it. The daft is done, and I wish you all a very crafty day. <laughs>